Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Ajanta Pharma Q4 FY22 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Yogesh Agrawal, Managing Director of Ajanta Pharma Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Well, uh, thank you. <coughs> Good evening and welcome to all of you. Uh, with me, I have uh, Mr. Rajesh Agrawal, our Joint Managing Director, and uh, Arvind Agrawal, our CFO. I'm glad to inform you that uh, financial year 2022 uh, we have returned rupees 436 crores to the shareholders against rupees 251 crore in the financial year 2021 in the form of dividend and buyback. So this reiterates our commitment to the shareholders to return the free cash flow in excess of the business requirement. Further, the board of directors have approved in today's meeting issue of bonus share in the ratio of one share for every two shares held subject to the approval of the shareholders. Coming to the results, uh, they are already there with you, and I'm happy to share with you, the year has witnessed a strong growth momentum across all our major markets. I will take you through the business-wise performance during the quarter and for the year, along with comparison of previous year for the same period. Let's start with the emerging markets uh, brand jumping business. Uh, first, I'll touch upon the Asia, during the quarter, sales was uh, 263 crores against 172, posting a 50% uh, healthy growth. And for the whole year, the sales was 813 crores against previous year 712 crores, posting a growth of 14%. The smart recovery in the growth was in line with our expectation and is the result of our continued effort to strengthen our brands in these markets. Coming to Africa, during the quarter, the sale was 136 crores against 99 crores, posting a healthy growth of 37%. And for the full year, the sale was 587 crores against 413 crores, posting a 42% growth. Asia and Africa put together contributed to 43% of the total revenue for the financial year 2022. Our exports to these markets were rupees 398 crores against 273 crores, a growth of 46% during the quarter, and rupees 1,400 crores against 1,124 crores, a growth of 25% during the year. Uh, moving to the U.S. generics, uh, U.S. contributed 21% to the total revenue for the financial year 2022. We registered the sales of 168 crores against 173 crores, posting 3% degrowth during the quarter. For the financial year 2022, the sales were 696 crores against 637 crores, posting 9% growth. Lower growth in Q4 and financial year 2022 was due to increased competitive intensity, leading to higher than anticipated price solutions on the base business. During financial year 2022, we launched three new products and filed eight NDAs. We received two final and one tentative approval and 20 ANDAs are awaiting approval with US FDA. We are poised to file 10 to 12 ANDAs in financial year 2023. Coming to the Africa institution business, this business contributed 6% in total revenue for financial year 2022. We registered sales of 50 crores against 80 crores, posting a degrowth of 38% during the quarter, and 206 crores Again, 271, posting a degrowth of 24% for the financial year 2022. As we have mentioned earlier, the institution business remains unpredictable. With this, now I hand over to Mr. Rajesh Agrawal, our Joint Managing Director, who will take you through the India business. Thank you, and over to you, Rajesh. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening to all of you. Let me now discuss some of the key highlights of the India business with you. India business contributed 30% in the total revenue for FY 2022. 
sales stood at rupees 245 crores against rupees 218 crores posting a growth of 13% during the quarter and was at rupees 982 crores against rupees 813 crores again posting a healthy growth of 21% for fy 2022 this includes sales from trade generics of rupees 30 crores during the quarter and rupees 117 crores for the whole year fy 2022 We have launched 16 new products in FY 2022, with four first-to-market products in the country. Our performance has been satisfactory, which was on the back of new product launches, market share gain, and price increase. As per IQVIA, MAC March 2022, we have posted a healthy growth in all therapeutic segments, and extended India and extended industry growth across therapies. We have. Three of our brands appearing in the top 500 in IPM now. With this, I would like to hand over to Arvind Agarwal, CFO, to take you through the financial performance. Thank you, and over to you, Arvind. Thank you very much. Good evening to all of you, and warm welcome to this morning call. For ease of discussion, we will look at the consolidated financials and provide year-on-year comparison. You will understand. that fy 2021 witnessed higher profitability due to covid impact hence fy 2022 comparison with previous year will not be apple to apple comparison let me take you through the financial highlights for the quarter and full year it was an excellent quarter and year with 15% growth in revenue for the q4 and 16% for the fy 2022 total revenue stood at rupees 871 70 crores against rupees 757 crores in q4 and is at rupees 3341 crores against 2890 crores in fy 22 ebitda for the quarter stood at 207 crores against rupees 259 crores for fy 2022 it was 929 crores against rupees 999 crores EBITDA was 24% for Q4 and 28% for FY22 lower than previous year due to normalized expenses on both R&D and marketing after the covid uh, post covid and increase in input cost and trade expenses during the quarter pat was at rupees 151 crores against rupees 159 crores down 5% and for FY22 It stood at 713 crores against 654 crores, up 9 percent due to reasons mentioned earlier. Pat for the year is at healthy 21 percent. Material cost was higher in Q4 and FY22 due to increase in API prices and US price erosion. We are still witnessing upward trend in few API prices, which may impact gross margin going forward. R&D expenses was at rupees 59 crores against rupees 39 crores last year for the quarter and rupees 204 crores and 139 crores for the whole year. R&D expenses stood at 6% of revenue, which will continue at this going forward. Other expenses reached normal peak and all the activities are at pre-COVID level. With our continued focus on branded and the business, we will be allocating. higher resources on product registration team and launch of new products other income stood at 116 crores in fy22 mainly contributed by forex gain of rupees 73 crores income tax stood at 22% for fy22 against 27% in fy21 and expected to move slightly higher going forward with some of the facilities phasing out their tax exemption We incurred capex of rupees 154 crores in FY22. Our net fixed asset turnover has improved to two times in FY22 compared to 1.8 times in FY2021. Capex, including maintenance capex to for FY2023, is estimated to be about 200 crores. We have reduced the inventory levels to 88 days against 98 days in previous year. 
with supply chain returning to normal peak. Receivable levels increased to 113 crore days in March 22 from 95 days in previous year, but they are all in normal routine nature. With these highlights, I open the floor for the question and answer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Tushar Manadhani from Motila Loswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, question on domestic population segment, given that this year had a robust growth, uh, on account of the low base of past work. I'm sorry to so interrupt, Mr. Manadhani, but their voice is breaking, sir. Is this better? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, just on domestic formulation, where the growth was quite robust for FI22, and at the same time, given that you have the annulium link price hike uh, upcoming in FI23, so what kind of growth can be anticipated uh, in this uh, segment? Overall, for domestic, we are looking at mid teens, and uh, more importantly, we are looking, our ambition is to grow faster than the market and the sub therapeutic segments. With mid teens growth, I think we should be growing faster than that. So that yes. And secondly, on uh, so uh, uh, secondly on the gross margin front, where we have seen a sharp dip, uh, good quarter quarter as well as year on year basis. Uh, so how do you see this raw material pressure uh, in the near term? Maybe like in over next uh, three to six months. Tushar, I think here I would like to explain, you know, this uh, quarter, if you see, the COGS is about 28%. Right? Right. Now, out of this 28%, 1.5% is one-time charge. Uh, we had sent one product uh, to US uh, with the expectation of uh, good flu season last year, two years. Uh, two years ago, and now it is nearing expiry, so we, are, we have written it off in this quarter. So that is one-time impact, which is about 1.5%. And there is another 1.5% impact because of the price erosion in the US. So total 3% of the, uh, you know, this uh, higher cost of fuel years is only because of this reason. 1.5% is one-time, so it is not going to be there. Another 1.5% will remain because that is the price erosion impact. But that right. we are expecting that uh, from going forward, we should be able to increase our branded business component um, higher in the future coming years, because of which we should be able to recover. So uh, our guidance of that 25% overall, uh, COGS is something which remains with 75% gross margin. Understood. Okay, that helps. Thank thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rashmi Sanchedi from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, again on gross margins, you said 1.5% uh, impact comes from the price duration in the US and 1.5% uh, charge on the, uh, the product charges. Uh, and the remaining everything comes from the high raw material prices? Yes, you are absolutely right. So that means the impact is quite higher, right? Uh, yes, you are right. You are yeah. Right. So what I want to understand, despite a very strong growth in the branded business segment uh, in Asia as well as Africa and India, uh, where normally the gross margins are pretty high, uh, this is not able to offset it. Uh, it will get offset. As I said, uh, you know, again just now that it will get offset, but uh, the numbers have to uh, get in uh, for that purpose because see, for the quarter, it will have a major impact. But once you are taking the whole year, you can see that our, uh, still the whole year uh, margin is still 75%. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
in spite of 28% in the quarter. So that is something which definitely has balanced out. So if I just reduce 1.5% from quarter sales of uh, you know uh, the raw material impact, uh, the yes. rest the new base for uh, quarter one FY23 and uh, quarter two FY23. Uh, or we should see, or we should see, uh, you know, raw material cost, which is uh, reported for entire FY22. Yeah, I think that would be the correct way to look at it. Uh, correct. The whole year normalized is 25 percent, so which uh, offsets the 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 one-time impact of 1.5 percent of the two product write-off, and also factors in the price erosion. So going forward, 25 percent in the current visibility what we have on the raw material packing control uh, prices is what we are looking for the next year. Okay. And sir, so how much is the price erosion uh, we have seen in FI22 versus FI21 in the US market? It's been quite high. Uh, traditionally, we've seen around 10% price erosion, but it's almost been on, in, to the tune of uh, 18%, 18% plus and my, plus minus. Okay. And any expectation whether it would soften down in uh, FI23 or you believe that it would still remain in uh, double digits? No, uh, we believe that uh, it should now again normalize to the 8 to 10 percent uh, price erosion going forward. 8 to 10 percent, okay. And sir, normally our run rate for product launches are around 5 to 6 every year. But this year we have just launched uh, three products only uh, during the year in the U.S. market. Uh, so what is the reason behind that and uh, uh, what are we guiding for FI 23 and 24? And uh, the next question is that, you know, what, uh, uh, is this kind of growth which we have seen in both Asia branded and Africa branded, uh, we will be able to sustain it or this is uh, something that we are seeing from one of supplies? Uh, so two parts. Let me take the U.S. part first. So in the U.S., uh, the filings, uh, the approval, the launches could not be done because there are a number of products under approval with the FDA. And as you are aware, the FDA has still not resumed the regular inspections. They are still doing the inspections either for cause or mission critical. So we've been pursuing with the FDA and the FDA stand still remains that they have not opened the regular overseas inspection. And in the time that doesn't resume, uh, our number of NDAs which are awaiting approval doesn't get approval. And this uh, scenario is not only to Agenda. I think this is across all the companies like us who are waiting for the FDA to start uh, inspecting. And as that starts to happen, we will again hopefully come back to the launches of five to eight products uh, per year. So that was the first part on the US. And uh, second on the branded uh, generic, uh, we've been guiding that uh, because of the headwinds which we see in the US market, uh, larger focus, attention, resources are being diverted towards the branded generic business in India and the emerging market. And uh, you've seen the growth uh, which we have posted in the current year. Uh, going forward also, we do not give the guidances uh, region-wise, but we believe that on a blended basis, we should be able to uh, deliver the mid teens to high teens uh, growth in this market. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. That's it from my side. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Randeria from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, and thanks for giving me this opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, I mean, is it fair to assume that the kind of price erosion that you mentioned is uh, maybe specific to Ajanta? perhaps, you know, two or three products, because some of your peers who are operating in the U.S., uh, you know, they have been saying that the price erosion has been fairly stable now for the last two quarters. Uh, Sorry to interrupt, sir, but we cannot hear you. Your voice is breaking. Uh, we are unable to hear you. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. So I am saying, in general, I think most companies have found, uh, seen uh, aggressive price erosion. Uh, and I think most companies in their uh, earning calls or otherwise, they have mentioned that uh, the price erosion have been twice of what we've witnessed in the normal years. Uh, so I think, uh, and again, uh, 
company to company it may vary depending on the product portfolio but in general our our uh, take is that the price solutions have been fairly aggressive but which are stabilizing now sure sir and we have to take this point forward so these kind of erosion obviously is cannot be sustainable right so at some levels the companies will have to start downsizing their portfolios uh so how far are we doing the industry from because once they start downsizing i guess the erosion would should also then start coming down <laughs> that's a good question uh, we we are not at that inflection point uh, case to case basis product to product uh, they keep getting added and dropped but i, I don't think on a materialistic uh, basis where i can say that there'll be any drop off of any product sure sir And so I, when I look at the balance sheets, the receivables have gone up quite sharply. So is there any kind of pressure from emerging markets? For what? Uh, your receivables? So receivables have gone back to the pre-COVID levels. So if you see pre-COVID levels, also your receivables around the same time. I think during the COVID times there was a lot of efficiency uh, which was coming, including expenses. Yeah. So uh, I think this is the normal level. There is uh, no uh, exceptional uh, elevated levels there. It was 111 in the 2020. Now it is 113. So we are at the same level. Got it. Got it, sir. And just lastly, sir, uh, you know, product shantix that we have discussed in the past. I mean, is the approval held back because of uh, uh, plant uh, inspection or some other uh, reason? Uh, no, unfortunately, there are uh, different components to it. So I think. Uh, Still not be able to uh, give you a product specific uh, insight. Uh, at at the best, we can say that it is still under review with the FDA, and we are hoping for the earlier approval uh, than later. Sure, sir. And just one more, if I can. So you have three hundred and twenty crores of cash in your books. Uh, just wondering, uh, you know, are you open to acquisitions? And if so, you know, what kind of uh, you know company or brands do you think? could could fit into your company uh yes i think we are looking at uh, the brand acquisition uh, for quite some time now and uh, we are in the market every you know uh, investment banker is aware that uh, we are looking for the brand our preference definitely will be india because uh, we understand it uh, better way and also we feel that here we can add value by acquiring the brand so we are open for it we are looking at all the deals which are happening in the market but we are still not getting uh, the brand for valuation which we feel is right so that is where i think we are waiting but otherwise we are definitely open got it sir thank you and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of abdul kader puranwala from ilara capital please go ahead Hi sir. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is with regards to the Infosys uh, 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 rationalization what we had done earlier. So uh, are we are we entirely done with it at 2800 or is there any further scope for us to rationalize this further? Rationalizing of the Infosys? Yeah. Yes, we are completely done with that, and uh, we don't see the scope or the need. to reduce the field force any further as a matter of fact uh, going forward as and when we feel it is important and the productivity increases then we will again come back in the mode of adding a medical representatives wherever necessary sure sir and yeah. also my next question is on the margin front so wherein you said the gross margins would be close to 75% ahead Uh, so I just wanted to hear you the commentary on how it would look on EBITDA and uh, and uh, you know considering that uh, some bit of an operating leverage would also be there on the business because of the you know uh, the Guwahati plant and the utilization level improving so if you could guide us uh, something on uh, the EBITDA margin front as would would be little helpful uh, I think uh, we should be able to retain the EBITDA margin of the current year uh, for the whole year uh, we have then about 28% i think uh, we should going forward also we should be able to uh, get this uh, kind of ebitda margin maintain this margin sure sir and just a final question if i may uh, 
so in your earlier commentaries you have mentioned that nearly uh, 50 to 60% of your branded genus portfolio is under some sort of a price restriction so now that uh, uh, the prices of your raw materials are increasing so so how soon can this be passed to the customers within the geographies of india asia and africa for india as and how we have the price eligibility to increase the price based on the NPPA uh, guidelines that we have, so we are able to comfortably pass that on. And uh, of course, as you have seen, all the NLEM products also there has been an increase of 10.5% in the last year because of the WPI linkage. So that also we have uh, taken for all the brands that were under NLEM, and uh, our NLEM brand portfolio is not more than 20% um, in the in the domestic. and if so it is for the international markets also as and how we have the opportunity we are able to pass on the price increases but at the same time we take a very granular approach and look at each brand and the other competitors pricing also because we don't want to be completely out of range so so it's a very meticulous process that we follow and then take a decision based on that Uh, uh, any color on where, which months, uh, you know, or which quarters will exactly the price hike has been taken earlier, or uh, you know, you would like to take a call going ahead as well. So for NLEM brands in domestic, it happens every year in April, as per the NLEM and NPPA guidelines. That's uh, common to the whole industry. So we have taken it last month, which will start to uh, impact us maybe May or June. as the inventory exhaust of the old pricing and for each other for the other brands it is based on a yearly cycle and again as i said it's hard to tell you on the company wide basis because every brand may have a different cycle and also different competitive pressures and the competitor mrp is also equally important for us to make a decision got it sir thank you so much yeah thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Ankit Pandya from Ingrid Asset Management. Please go ahead. I hear you. Uh, where you said that uh, for the non-NLEM portfolio, this is an annual exercise, and uh, you'll have to wait to see how the uh, how the competitor behaves. Uh, but you know the costs, uh, which is the API cost sector, has gone up equally for you and your competitor. um and you know as we understand ajanta is one of the leading brands in most of the therapies that you are presenting so in majority of the cases it is the leader who initiates the price increase and the followers follow um so uh, so you know you you would already have a fair estimate as to what kind of price increase you'll be able to take in 80% of your india portfolio which is not covered by nlem so would you like to guide us uh, as to what percentage price increase you will be able to take So you are right in a way that uh, wherever we have market leadership, uh, we are in a position to command the pricing. But at the same time, we are also price leaders in most of the molecules that we have been first to launch or where we hold significant market share. So we are already at the price point where competitors are a little bit lower than us, or maybe at max along with us. so what happens is we will have to evaluate based on the indirect competition also but the maximum to answer your second uh, question the maximum uh, price increase that we can take is 10% for the whole year on any given brand as per the nlem nppa and uh, nlem is of course linked to wpa wpi and nppa guidelines restrict us to take not more not more than 10% so that's an exercise with that we take undertake and then we increase the prices as and how we find it appropriate i understand uh, thanks thanks for the response uh, secondly when it comes to let's say asia or your africa branded sales um would uh, would the dynamics be similar there i know the nlem concept doesn't apply there but uh, just in and in some cases they dictate prices uh, but you know what kind of price increase would you be able to take in your branded markets So in Asia, some of the countries actually follow a similar method like Indonesia, and like Philippines has a list of essential medicine, and uh, they are there also. They have, uh, but of course, we don't have any of the brands in that particular list. Uh, 
but we are able to pass on the pricing because as you know the inflationary price pressures are being faced by all the competitors across the globe so this is a common practice now in the last 6 months 9 months that we are seeing that companies are uh, very comfortable taking the price increases across the globe in every segment every country so we are also doing the same and as i explained earlier we take a very very meticulous and uh, on the ground approach and then look at each brand and then take the price increases so at a bucket level let's say on the asia business uh, would the price increase be in high single digits or low single digit or low double digit because the cost inflation clearly reflects it more than that so i think uh, let's look at the company level only that is a better way we don't give out the margins on a region wide uh, basis so as we said for the current quarter the 3% extra uh, cost which we have seen against our typical 24% or we have guided 25% we have seen 28% So what we said is 1.5 percent is because of the one-time inventory write-off, and 1.5 percent is because of the price erosion. So if you remove that 3 percent, then we are at 125. The next year, what we are saying is that going forward, this 1.5 percent price erosion is here to stay, but we are going to recover this by increase of the business from the branded generic business, which also includes the price increases, which will have a higher margin. so this is how our plan is to recover the 1.5% and we are giving a guidance of 25% gross margin uh, cost rather uh, 75% gross margin for the whole company i think it will be too difficult and not possible for us to give you a region wise uh, uh, price increases and the timelines on when it's going to happen uh, it may not be relevant also to go so granular fair enough fair enough uh, just one last question so out of your total cogs let's say your total cogs is 100 rupees how much is the uh, api cost and how much is the cost of formulation i understand you also buy finished goods for some businesses uh, so if you could uh, give us a rough split how much is your finished good purchase how much is formulation cost and how much is purchase of uh, another key starting material good question i don't know if i have the figures uh, with me Do we have the figures? Yes. Yeah, See, the purchase of stock in trade is about 136 crores. Out of the total uh, material cost of about uh, 832 crores. So we are talking about uh, about 20 percent, 15 percent, uh, around 15 to 16 percent of the total material cost which is being purchased directly. They are called traded goods. so that is the component balance everything is uh, with the in house material apis and packing material and uh, consumables which are going to be consumed there yes uh, so in uh, how much is the co- uh, so by, out of the balance 700 crores how much is our third party purchase of api or raw material if you could just uh, you know zoom into that number a bit see uh, we we purchase entire api from third party exactly so at the 700 crores Cost. As I said, out of 832 crores of total cost for the year, 136 is uh, for the uh, purchase, direct purchase or from the third party, finished goods. Combination. So out of the balance 700, there will be some cost of uh, conversion of uh, API to raw material, right? And some cost. No, of no, 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 no. It is uh, come only raw material and packing material and consumables. The manufacturing cost is in the uh, other expenses. other expenses the power and fuel and all that okay yeah 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 so 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 700 entirely is basically third party yes yeah. got it yes yeah. uh, yeah. got it okay yeah. this is helpful thank you yeah thank you thank you <clears throat> the next question is from the line of beno pati parampal from incred capital please go ahead hi um hi thank you uh, just couple of questions from my side um first um, just a follow up on chantix um uh, you know i can see there are some tentative approvals on the us fda website um uh, whereas i don't see you has it you have a tentative approval so would you have to wait for those guys to launch the product before you launch or uh, you think you can go along uh with them on day 1 if you get approval in time uh unfortunately uh, i am not able to give you a more detailed answer on this uh, there are different components associated with this uh, product uh we are uh these are the many touch points uh, which one is five where the exclusivity the fda approval 
Uh, so I think I'll have a limitation in giving you more visibility on this product. Okay. Uh, and and just uh, have you done any settlement yet or no? Yes, yes. We have the raw materials, packing materials ready with us. So the day we get the product approval, within 60 days, we'll be able to reach the inventories to the U.S. market. The good part about this is the uh, Pfizer has come back. Apotex, I think, uh, ramped up the, the thing. So earlier, uh, I, I'm not sure Apotex or some other company, I think, part. So the good part is that the market, which was at risk of uh, uh, melting or not uh, becoming non-existent, is back up again. So that's a good news because unit-wise, the market is again back to the pre-nitrosamine uh, challenges. So for the any new generics which are coming in, there will be a bigger pie from which they can take a share. Okay. I guess Endo is the one who has launched what you mentioned, right? Right, right yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And uh, do you have any sort of settlement with the Pfizer yet, or um, that's open? <laughs> As I said, uh, I'll have some limitations in uh, giving you visibility on this. Some matters are oh. uh, confidentiality agreements, uh, no, okay. okay, no problem. Thank you. And yeah. just uh, just another question about the Africa institutional business. Uh, what's the outlook for coming here? Uh, we give, continue to give the guidance of the flattish nature uh, of what we have done current year. We should be able to do that kind of business next year also. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Alicia Mahavla from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, so good evening and thank you for taking my question. So my question was with respect to the branded business in the emerging markets. We've obviously seen very strong growth um, this year and we're talking about achieving a mid to high team growth on top of this. Is my understanding correct? That's correct, yeah. And um, can you break down into where do we, what will be the growth drivers or why are we expecting this business to achieve such high growth on such a high base? So good drivers are the same as uh, what they are. I think new brand launches, gain of market share and price increases. And uh, we are confident that we will And also we are taking uh, undertaking expansion wherever we feel it is appropriate in terms of adding the numbers uh, of the numbers of the medical representatives in every country. So this is what will drive the growth and we are reasonably uh, confident that we should be able to achieve these objectives. Yeah. Okay, sure. Sure. And uh, with respect to our margins, we just called out earlier that we're expecting it to be at about 28% level, but post the, uh, with improved utilization at Guwahati, we were expecting this to be closer to 30%. So is there a reason why we're expecting that we won't be closer to the 30% mark in the near term? Basically, I think the uh, price erosion in the US uh, is impacting us uh, to some extent. Plus, also, we are now investing on the uh, next uh, phase of growth for the next four to five years by investing more on the product registrations and for the people, etc. So, because of that, it is a conscious call that we are taking. We would like to really uh, work on that. We are talking about higher resources allocation for the uh, branded generic business. So, because of that, we expect that it should be somewhere around 28%. Okay, thank you. So I think this, uh, just to add on, uh, on what your question was, the fact, uh, as we said, that we are adding more resources, attention, focus on the branded generic business. So that is what is increasing the expenses also, because uh, we are adding people, we are increasing the promotion. So all this is adding uh, uh, and some R&D expenditure also, because we are putting a lot of trust on developing new products, filing the registration. So this is kind of slightly elevating the, the expenses, uh, resulting in to still be able to maintain a 28% EBITDA, which is still a very healthy EBITDA to have. So this is uh, primarily looking forward for next three to five years growth. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Before we take the next question, reminder to the participants to ask a question, please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Nitin Gosar from Invesco. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, two uh, questions. Uh, 
on R and D. Uh, R and D now is around 200 crores for the year. Uh, um, dollar denominated number could be around 27 million dollars. Could you help me understand where are we investing uh, predominant growth if it's coming from branded generics? Then why the investment is so high for R and D? So, yeah, almost I think it is uh, 50-55 percent is for the regulated markets, US, and uh, around 45 percent odd is for the India and the emerging markets. What Nitin, I think uh, you are trying to ask is that uh, the R&D expenditure is high according to you in terms of the branded journey business. That's what you are trying to say, right? Because it's compared yeah. to previous year. Yes. And what should be previous year is last year is not a like-to-like -like comparison. Yes. Because previous year, uh, in, you can see that because of COVID, the R&D was almost uh, not working for six months. So that is why the expenditure was lower. But if you see the uh, year before. I think our expenditure was almost about 140 crores. So I think uh, we are talking about uh, consistently investing on the new product registrations, new product development, even for the emerging markets and India also. With the, uh, just to add to that, R&D is what has given us the edge to be able to launch all the new brands in India as well as in the international markets. And uh, most of these formulations, we have been the first. So in that sense, uh, we have been investing, uh, you know, reasonable amounts in the R&D, which has helped us to uh, gain a competitive advantage in the market. Okay. And what should be the ballpark understanding on U.S. market R&D investment, like 13, 14 million dollars, and we're doing filing of around uh, 10 to 12 a year? Uh, how should we gauge the investment uh, ratio? Is it high, moderate, according to you? Uh, so we have titrated uh, the uh, ANDA filing and we are looking to file 10 to 12. Uh, current year we ended up filing 8, but there are some products which got skewed uh, towards the end of the year and uh, we are expecting a larger filing in the Q1. Uh, so next year it could be instead of 10 to 12, it could be higher than that also. So I think in terms of percentage, as I said, uh, you can... Uh, Estimate around 55% to be for the U.S. regulated market of the R&D spend, and 45 is for India and the emerging market. Okay, okay. Uh, second question is with regard to working capital. Um, Arvindji, uh, you you mentioned uh, we are going back to the you know pre-COVID days on debtor days. Yeah. But if I were to take your know, combination of inventory debtors and payables, we have gone to almost uh, you know. Uh, a level where we have not seen this company for last seven eight years. Uh, you know, uh, our our understanding of earlier five years was you know anywhere between three to four months, and now we are surpassing five months on inventory day, uh, on working capital. Yeah. What are we trying to do out here? Why is it going up, and uh, what can result it to come down ultimately? No, for the inventory, slightly you've seen last year we had the ramp data because of the COVID uncertainties, and that was a conscious call to take in not to be stopped out of the market, which we are now pruning down slowly. And currently you've seen from 98 has already come down to 88 days. Mm -hmm. And maybe there is some scope to build, taper it down further. Number one. Number two, there are some uh, inventories which got built up because of the new product launches expected for the for the US market. That also got added up and we didn't get the ND approval. So that also uh, slightly elevated. Uh, I think uh, other than that, uh, there is no concern on the receivables. I think it is 110, maybe at the end of the quarter, uh, uh, the billing uh, occurred, which is resulting into slightly higher uh, outstanding. But there is nothing to be concerned about. I think it's a very normal level. The point is, in, uh, only if I were to see numbers in last four days, four years, it's moved from you know 120 days to 128, then 145, and now 160. Uh, you know, uh, total working capital. Working capital right? I think, uh, Nitinji, there, I think uh, I mentioned last year also the same thing. Uh, I again repeat that the U.S. business has got definitely higher inventory and higher receivables. So that is something which we explained last time also, that that is the cycle which is there in that particular market. And uh, we strategically have placed higher inventory for that particular market 
plus also the invent the cycle there is little longer because of the chargeback etc which i explained last time so if you are comparing four years back then our us business was very small now the us business is higher so naturally to that extent it has gone up okay so we, we should consider this number as a steady state number 160 days or it should yeah i think this is a steady state number now uh, there may be as uh, md said there may be some scope for improvement but nothing major really okay got it got it sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of harsh beria for an individual investor please go ahead uh hi uh, am i audible yes you are audible please go ahead uh hi uh congrats for the good set of numbers uh, i was seeing on the fda website that ajanta got an and approval for generic testolic in march and i also remember like last time you guys said uh that we cannot get uh, approvals unless fda inspects our facilities does that mean there was some kind of inspection at our facility Uh, no there was no inspection so it is a fda call which they feel under the review that they can approve the products without having to go for the factory inspection uh, so it's purely uh, during the review cycle the call is taken by the fda so there could be uh, approvals which may be received uh, without the inspection also uh, and there are a lot which get tied up with the inspection So we uh, to answer your question, no, we we have not had the inspection for the our facilities from the FDA. Okay, uh, my last question is about the uh, domestic trade generics. I've seen that this business has scaled very well. I think uh, it's already up to one seventy crore uh, levels. Uh, what's the agenda? What's agenda strategy in this business division? the overall strategy in this is we are trying to focus more on uh, speciality. as against just general uh, product range that is there and uh, we have gained a tremendous acceptance with the trade and also uh, with the pharmacists chemists and the patients and that is what is uh, that is what has given us the traction and the and the growth that you see uh, crossing 100 crores in this year um, and other cross margins uh, similar to the branded generics uh, in the trade generics division <coughs> no gross margins are much lower <coughs> as you can expect um, <coughs> they are much lower but yet they are lucrative enough for us to be able to operate in it okay uh, can you give like a broad range of gross margins that this division might be making is it similar to the <coughs> gross margins of 55 60% no we don't give the individual gross margins say for the division wise uh i understand uh thanks for taking my question that's it from my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of surajit pal from bob capital markets please go ahead hi uh thanks for taking my question um uh, as you have mentioned is that you know you are also getting into non pharma business in apa segment could you throw some light to your plan and uh, how aggressive you are into getting into that and what could be the approximate revenue going forward no i think there is some uh, misunderstanding we are not getting into non pharma or in api business at all we are very uh, firmly interested into formulations and that is what our core strength is and we will uh, like to build on that itself okay okay and uh, do you think that current uh, level of uh, marketing expenditure or the other uh, overhead cost will maintain at the same level or uh, do you expect that there will be growth further no i think uh, it will be at the same level uh, barring the normal inflation definitely that will uh, rip in but otherwise it will be almost at the same level okay 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 thank you thank you thank you participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one now
Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Sukhish Agrawal for closing comments. Uh, I just want to thank uh, all of you for joining this uh, call. Uh, if there are any uh, questions which left uh, un unanswered today, uh, please feel free to reach out to our investor relations team. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Ajanta Pharma, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect.